Defense and Tyreek Hill heading back out onto the field. There was a lot of talk in training camp about him getting off to a hot start this year, saying that they needed that. Well, he's done it for the first month. It kind of reminds me of one of those great musical groups where one person has their name out front, then they have the backups, right? <laughs> he's the guy out front because the backups, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, but we're going to the headliner each and every time. And that's not easily done because you know all the defenses are kicking towards him right now. That means he's fighting his way through traffic, finding ways to get open, even when he's not supposed to be. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 15 yards on that one. Kansas City has a first down. So after the run by McCoy, here's another first and 10. And they'll keep it on the ground with McCoy. Room to run inside the 40. And finally taken down at the 34. Nice play for Kansas City, picking up the first 18 yards that time. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now a first down carry here for McCoy. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one good for 12 yards into Kansas City first. This give is to McCoy. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. Give him 9 on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and 1. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business in the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Now Carlos Hyde in the game. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. Now the Broncos are going to take a timeout. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. Running it with a fullback, Burton. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. Tackled by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. to the ground this time with Freeman and they'll bring him down here right around the 17 yard line all right folks eager to get back to this week four matchup we won't put up a fight so we've reached halftime with the visiting Chiefs on top and to no one's surprise here in Denver that'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback here comes the Chiefs offensive unit as they'll have it to begin quarter number three. They had a big first half. Now they have a chance to add to that lead here in the opening possession of the second half. And everyone always asks about halftime adjustments, kind of a key phrase. What did you do at halftime? Well, the way they ran offense in the first half, I think they were very calm, congratulatory, but also what they were saying is, don't expect them to be the same on defense. They'll be the ones making the adjustments. Let's see what they do, and we'll attack accordingly. And we'll see how they attack here. And he takes this into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, 76 yards. And the Chiefs have got it on cruise control. And with that carry, he has done it. He breaks the single game rushing record. How about doing it in the spotlight of our game? How wonderful is that to see all those yards accumulated culminating in a brand new NFL record?
Butker on for the PAT. Extra point right down the middle. And that will extend this big lead. Butker now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Yeah, shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Right back to him on first down. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. Brandon, we're into the second half, and this offense has not scored a lot of points, and that was another example of why. I think it's time to open things up and start really trying to move the ball. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing? Often alters the normal spacing and run fit. And, the... and he fires one that's intercepted. It's the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Charles, whatever's going on between his ears right now, it's just not completely calculated correctly. Seven picks between last week and this week after that one. And they always say the most important part of a player is those six inches between the ears. But right now, it's all those interceptions that are going on. So whoever his trusted confidant is on the sidelines, I don't know if it's the offense coordinator, the quarterback's coach, maybe the backup quarterback, that's who he needs to get with now and get himself calm. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10, just shy of midfield to 49. A give to McCoy. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Wiggles free. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? And he's going to get this inside the 30. That good for 19 and a first down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Another carry tonight for McCoy. He's been the workhorse. Down to the 25. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Run, run, run. Ah! On second down, it's McCoy. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Ah! This is McCoy. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Call it a gain of four, and it'll bring up fourth down. They'll go with McCoy. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's first and goal after they rip off a solid chunk of yardage in the ground game on a risky fourth down call. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. 